the greenhouse controlled environments, okay, greenhouse structures. And uh, we'll also talk about the capacity development. I mean, we have covered this and we have discussed this item and you have expressed the need for that. So we, we will discuss the uh, uh, capacity development and the bond program. Okay, we'll move on afterwards to continuous improvement, the uh, operational excellence. We'll have some presentations from our fellow colleagues at IITA, okay, their projects, how, what their perception of their use also of continuous improvement, how they handle things. And we have a discussion also, a good discussion on NARS involvement. And afterwards we will end with the, um, uh, with a field tour to the greenhouse structures here at IIT. So, greenhouses and controlled environments. We know that there, you have many systems and we have seen that, that across campus, there are many, many, many systems here at IATA, at different centers, we have seen also some, some structures, some that were well built, some that had faults, some that you have described to us that, yeah, we're suffering from, let's say they, have, they collapse every now and then, or we have problems with, let's say the netting, or we have problems with the uh, cover, be it nylon cover, be it uh, whatever type of cover that the, it is used. Okay, so we will cover certain specifics on what we should consider when we are designing or when we need to install anything in a greenhouse structure as well. So greenhouses are considered to be semi-permanent structures. Okay, it is not a permanent structure. That doesn't mean it will stand the ages of time. It is not a historical relic that we can preserve. Okay, it is something that has a time limit. Okay, all the materials have limits. We have to maintain them well, okay? And we have to also fix. And at, at certain uh, times, we have to replace certain components to make sure that the structure will stand, okay, on its own. It is designed based on the type of structure and based on the design, it can last up from 10 to 25 years. I know there are structures that are older than that. That does not mean that this is the exception to the rule, okay? That's the general rule of it. A greenhouse structure must support loads. It does not have to just support its own weight. There, there are different components that we need to install. There are different mechanisms that we need to install. There are the cooling systems, the heating systems. We need to have, let's say, if we want to automate, there is the open and close and shut system for, for the ventilation. We have the fans, we have the crop, which is quite important because the crop inside will induce a lot of weight. We have the nylon cover or, or, or if it is polycarbonate, so the type of cover that has to hold. Plus, it has to hold the atmospheric pressure and the weight coming from the atmosphere, such as wind, such as rain or water or snow when it snows. It doesn't snow here, but... It, it, there, are, there is dirt here, for example, all right? It has to hold that pressure as well. So what are the parameters that we need to start with? Let's say we want to start a project. We have to select the site, okay, for us to go and install a greenhouse. What are my considerations? The first consideration is I need to have access to service. If I have a greenhouse or a glass house or a net house structured anywhere in the field where I cannot actually go and service or access via vehicle or have any form of access of, in the form of electricity, for example, okay, it will not last for long. I need to be able to service it. So this is a practicality issue that I have to consider. I need to have it near a source of good quality water or I have to provide good quality water. Providing good quality water does not mean that this is an easy process, okay? So I have to 
be able to provide this level of water for my irrigation or even for my cooling system. If I have, for example, saline water or if I have hard water, this will jeopardize my cooling system. I need to take these into consideration. Why? Because this will affect also my maintenance and performance as well on the long run. It has to be on leveled land. The first thing, one of the first things that, okay, a, a contractor will come and tell you, okay, what is the, what the shape of the land? Okay, how is it? Is it leveled? Is it not leveled? They want to know and they want to understand if they have to induce leveling into their work order because leveling one takes time two it is necessary to in order to hold the structure especially if we're talking about for example multi spans where we need to actually have concrete bases for the pillars or for the structures other types like the single tunnels they we do not need we do not need unless it is an upright tunnel we do not need concrete bases what we will need is actually just the soil but it has to be also leveled soil or sloped in a gentle slope so that the water definitely percolates and it doesn't clog in. But that needs to be done before we start our installation and never after. We cannot go, yeah, well, let's install and then we level. No, it doesn't work out that way. Electricity availability, right now we have many sensors. We need access to technology. We need access to... Uh, 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 certain uh, equipment, okay? It is not always just, it's not that a simple uh, unit. I have irrigation system inside. I have uh, uh, humidifiers. I have dehumidifiers. I have fans. I have heaters. I need to have a source of power available for my greenhouse or controlled environment unit. It has to be well-drained. And this is something that is mostly neglected. Nobody considers the drainage system. Nobody ever considers a, a drainage system. Especially when we are talking, especially for, for example, if we are talking in nurseries or in the big glass houses, for example, you must have a drainage system. What, what happens to the water? If the water is still there and it's remaining for a long period of time, relative to the humidity is going to raise up and we're going to have other problems like fungi, like uh, uh, other uh, other pests, okay, and, and diseases that will be induced. We need to have a site which has a natural windbreak. However, this is a tricky thing. Why is this tricky? Because windbreaks can also provide a shading effect. So there is a certain regulation, okay, for us to follow when we have natural windbreaks and we actually encourage the use of natural windbreaks because it will reduce the level of damage, okay? And level of accidents that would happen inside the glass house or inside the greenhouse. Many a times you have informed us that, yeah, due to some wind, okay, the structure is collapsing. There are many parameters for that, okay? One is the design, two is the structure, three is the material. But reducing this, reducing the intensity or the power of wind inside by using natural wind brakes can help with that process. And for, with, after that, notice that after this, we have to have distance from shadowing. And even the orientation, the way it is structured in the field or the, the way it is going to be constructed in the direction it, it has to be constructed will ha have a certain effect on, or a shadowing effect inside the, uh, the structure or in the control environment unit. So, regarding orientation, in lands or areas which are in the Northern Hemisphere above 40 degrees north, okay? The orientation should be from east to west. The ridge or the long, uh, side should be from east to west. However, below the 40 degrees altitude, okay, the ridge of single greenhouses should be oriented from north to south since the angle of the sun is much higher. 
This has an effect on the shadowing as well. Because the structure in itself, if we have, for example, a multi-span, for instance, okay, we have gutters for water percolation. So that when, during the rainy season, I don't want to uh, damage my structure. I need to form certain gutters so that my wat water will drain into a certain pipe, into a certain canal. There has to be, again, the drainage, all right? The orientation from north to south is most adequate because it will provide less shade on the crop. Again, this is a controlled environment where you are conducting experiments. This is not production. Since you are conducting trials and experiments, you need to reduce the parameters that will cause what deviations, okay, that are going to cause you certain errors in, in the procession of your crop. So orientation of the glass house or greenhouse or any structure of the controlled environment is quite essential and quite important for us to consider. The second thing is location. And we have discussed a little bit on the location, but we have to check that the greenhouse facility is severely affected by the shading caused by the nearby. Okay, if, if we have structures, if we have buildings, okay, it's like, okay, yeah, I have a building here. I can, I can put a, a glass house or a nut house next to it. But did you consider the shading effect that it has? If you are using completely artificial lighting, that means it has to have a complete shade from the outside, no sunlight uh, moving in, okay? And you are using artificial light, then who cares? But if you are reliant on sunlight, you have to structure it away from nearby buildings, okay? With the general rule that for any object that is taller than 3.3 meters, we should be within nine meters away from the greenhouse. It's almost three times the distance of the height of anything that is, okay, nearby in terms of structure okay, to reduce the shading effect on my plants or on the, the greenhouse in, in general. Magnitude of the shadows depends on the angle of the sun and thus on the season of the year. Okay, this is something already natural and we understand that completely. Right. So, what are the types of loads? And this is for us to understand. The manufacturers already know this. They understand this, okay? And they're going to ask you, okay? And they ask us, actually, once you ask, ask the question, yeah, we need to construct a net house or we want to, let's say, upgrade a net house or a greenhouse, they will ask, okay, what, first, what type of crop? Do you need crop holders? Are, is there anything that is going to propagate or is going to load on the structure? Which means, will you have wires from the floor up to the crop holders for the plants to hold on to? Why this is going to create extra load? So in general, we have what we call the dead load. And the dead load is the weight of the structure, including the components that are fixed. The fixed components such as if we have a dryer that is hanging, if we have a circulation fan, if we have the cooling pads, if we have irrigation systems that are on the railings, okay, the crop holders that we have, those are all considered the dead load. The live load is the living organism, which means whatever, whatever plant, okay, or whatever organism that I am utilizing, okay, and using inside, okay, that is going to live on the structure and it's going to create load on that structure. We have the wind load and we'll go on that, uh, into that further, okay? And this is normally has a huge impact on the external structure of the greenhouse or glass house or net house. And we have what they call the snow load, okay? Which is the effect of rain the effect of snow, the effect of dirt, okay? Anything external outside the structure that is going to affect or that is going to put some extra load on the structure that we have. So if we look at the diagrams here, this is the dead load. This 
is the dead load. This entire structure is the dead load. What is living inside, hanging on the crop holders, is the live load. What is on the outside is the snow, what we call the snow load. And the wind effect is basically what is blowing and is creating pressure on the structure itself. And here the design is, and we talk about certain glitches that we have seen in, in certain designs because sometimes we try to oversimplify things. And we say, yeah, well, we need, for example, like an RGA, okay? Or we need to create a net house for uh, heat stress, or we need blah, blah, blah. So my first question is, okay, right, the purpose, etc., and move on and so forth, and location, do you have a location, etc., great. So do you have any wind data? How strong is the wind? Yeah, well, we, we don't have a problem. What do you mean you don't have a problem? Have you measured it? No, no, we don't have a problem. We have constructed before without a problem. This is neither scientific, nor is this accurate and adequate. We need to be able to provide something. This is an investment. You're paying money for this. Okay, this is not coming from nothing. Even if you have pipes, okay, and trying to construct something, that doesn't mean you're doing it right. Okay? So... The different shapes that we have, we have what we call the gable, the flat arch, because look at, you know, it's, it's, we have an upright unit with an arch on top. We have the dome, which is not an arch, but it's actually a narrower angle. We have the normal or regular tunnel, or we call the single tunnel, the tripenta. We have what we call the sawtooth. And for each, there's a reason, okay? We have the uneven, we have the skillion, A-frame, ridge, uh, and furrow, okay, which looks like, if you look at the field, it's like the normal furrows that you use for planting. There's the Gothic style, there's a shade house, and this is the most I have seen, okay, everywhere here. This is the most that I have seen the shade house, and we're supposed to have net houses, okay, for different purposes, and because this is the simplest structure, this is the most that I've seen, okay, but it has many faults. There's the lean-to, and this lean-to, basically, it is connected to a certain building, attached to a building, okay, and the igloo, okay, which is a complete circular dome. Looking at these, okay, there are different parameters that we need to consider. Let's, let's take this type, for example. This resembles what the tripenta, for example. Okay? What do you see here? Just let me know what, what do you see. Do you see any difference? Anyone? Feel free to comment. If you don't see any difference, ventilation. Yeah, I think uh, basically it has to do with uh, more or less like what Alex has said. The other one is uh, more or less manually controlled in terms of you open and close the top one. Okay. Uh, and then the second one, it is louvers. Probably again, they can only they can be opened and co uh, controlled, and also even within the inside part of the lower one, I think that's in uh, is it an extractor or something that is on top Where? to increase on ventilation? This? Yeah, that one. Uh, they, they they use a normal fan and no a normal yeah. industrial fan. Oh, okay, yeah. which normally some people use an extractor just to right cool off the the system. Huh? The upper one does not have provision for dead load, apart from the load, the dead load of the construction equipment. Uh, the the, the, the lower mean? one has provision for the life load hanging. Yeah. And then the dead load for okay. the structure itself. If we have high winds, which is more more most likely to collapse. Top or bottom? 
Αυτό. Okay. I think. You think. Look, look. <laughs> Tell me. No, actually, it just, it's, you know, it's just common sense. It doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, the engineering and the failures and structures. Just simple common sense. Look, looking at it, is the one at the bottom more structured or preserved in the structure than the top one? The answer is yes. I know that this is challenging a, a, a little bit. Because I didn't know the number of columns, the distance between the various... Uh, the uh, thing is, I, I, I get what you're saying. and it, it is a trick question, you know, because you, you have some wiring there, okay, but that wiring is not enough to hold the structure when there is high wind or if the intensity of wind is high. And this is one of the things that we look for when we're trying to buy to reduce costs. At the expense of re reducing costs, we are jeopardizing our system, okay, and causing it to fail. And then we have additional costs later when we are trying to do what? Maintenance or repairs? Repairs, okay? Because once I have failure, I have to repair, okay? So that means if I, I consider the economic value of it, this structure is cheaper than the one below it, all right? Not because of the sophistication, but I'm talking just simply the structure. However, this, the upper structure is most likely to fail while this one has a higher success rate, okay? Or a higher, let's say, uh, uh, rate of strength and rigidity against wind tolerance can i interrupt you a little sir? yes what about those who use steel ropes outside to fasten the upper structure to the ground it, yeah you can do that however however those things tend to with time loosen okay if the structure does not hold with from within Okay, it will not be that easy to control or to support from, you know, from the outside. It has been known, okay, to, to help, especially in multi-spans, okay, or in very large uh, uh, constructions where you have loose soils. Okay, but if you have heavy soil, if you have even loamy soil, but if you have certain amount of clay, there's a certain level of compaction when you are putting extra weight on it. It will normalize, okay? And as it normalizes by the type of construction and the type of material that you use, it will hold on its own. For this structure to hold, okay, it might need its little help. There might be even internal, actually there is, you know, we have supports on the sides and at the bottom that are going to help hold the structure together. Otherwise, it's going to fall collapse. and collapse on the, in, on, the, from, on the inside, okay? If we look at this, for example, look at the crop holders, how they are designed. Sometimes you see them designed in V-shape. And those V-shapes are going to help if we have high intensity of wind. It is all relevant to the conditions that you have. That's why when you, when you are designing, Okay, or when the designer comes over and says, yeah, well, this is the design that is most suitable to your area. They will ask you many questions, including what is the temperature that you need inside? What is your ambient temperature outside? What, to what level do you need to cool? They will ask all of these questions. In terms of structure, it is always, where is it going to be situated for them to calculate or get the weather, the weather data? get the wind intensity for them to design this properly. Otherwise, they can provide you, with, and you need to know this, okay, because once you get the quotation and they provide you with the design, you need to know that they are not trying to, okay, rob you or trying to sell you something that is bad. You need to know and understand they are, you need to have a certain support structure for that. Look at this, for example. This structure has ventilators, and we'll see why. It has in many things. 
It's natural ventilation on the inside to reduce temperature, but it's also not that. It reduces relative humidity, but it's also not that. It will help with the wind, okay? Instead of having extra pressure of the wind on the outside, you'll have some pressure flowing on the inside that will support the structure when you have high winds, okay? So, can you move the slide? doesn't want to move. All right, those are the shapes, sorry. Okay, which one? Those are the shapes that have been documented for tropical areas, okay? We have the sawtooth shape. We have this one, which is in the middle. And what, what you can see, this is inclined in the center where you have the shelter from the rain, and you have small uh, uh, incline in the center with gutters, okay? This is a gutter. You have to make sure that water does not affect you because we are in, a, in the tropics, and in tropical areas, rain is going to cause problems as well, okay? That's why you see this type of structure, for example, okay? And we have those, this is what they call the Chinese hat. Okay, it is ventilated from, from the top. It reduces the effect, one, the effect of rain and the effect of wind at the same time. Okay. So judging from the different structures that we have, okay, we can always have different components or different, let's say, uh, uh, building structures. For example, this is designed for wood. Okay, it's a wooden structure. It's quite common, but not here. Okay, because the wood, especially in our areas here, in, in, in the tropical areas, especially when we, the places where we have termites, it is going to be problematic. Okay, because we'll have to treat the wood. And when you treat the wood with the humidity, you might affect your crop. Okay, this is another structure, structure which is the parallel type. Okay, this is the multi-span. And this is, for example, used in for, for as, as glass house or poly, polycarbonates. And you can see that even though we can have curved, okay, structures, okay, with, using polycarbonate or using a rigid, okay, covers, okay, it is going to be very expensive. That's why it is always angled, okay? Because it was initially, it started initially using glass. Okay, and glass it's not is not easy to bend, but it's going to cost it's going to cost a lot to prepare it up to certain specifications. So the structural materials we have is galvanized mainly galvanized steel that has been welded under cool environments. This is cool welded, not hot welded. There is a difference between those. Okay, there's a difference between cool welding and hot welding. And the difference will affect the rigidity and will affect the longevity of the weldings of the pipes. The only issue is the disadvantage with this is the high cost and having any nylon or even netting that is directly attached to the, the steel, okay, is going to cause some wear and tear because one of the wind. Okay, the friction plus the sunlight, the heat. Wood provides a natural insulation. It is good, it has its advantages. However, the disadvantage here, especially for us, is that this is going to, uh, this has to be treated. There has to be a high quality wood and it has to be treated with humidity. And within the environment of the greenhouse, it might be toxic to the plants. We have something called low carbon steel. It is cheaper. However, it is brittle in a way. So they use it for structures and not the arcs. Okay, in some structures, we have high strength low alloy steel, which is the highly recommended. However, the problem with that, it is not easily workable. It has low machinability to structure it up to the curves that we need. It might serve, for example, for the glass house structures or the angle structures like the Gothic or for the glass houses, for example. Aluminum, 
is good. It is light. <clears throat> it is light. It can be square shape or round shape. But the problem is it does not serve the purpose when we are working with fiberglass or glass or any rigid type of cover. Okay? It does not stick well. The cover material, we have nets. And I'm not going to go into the details of the netting because the details of the netting can go forever. You have the mesh. You have the quality. You have the shading effect. Okay, you have the thrips resistance, you have aphid resistance, you have depends on the size of the meshing that you, you, have, you need, okay, or you have, and depends on your requirement. However, for other complete cover material, we have the low density polyethylene, which is of low cost. The lifespan of this is not very high, it is two to three years maximum, okay, and it will change color with time and dust and friction, okay, this is going to change. Color, glass, this is excellent quality. The light diffusion is minimal, okay? It is beautiful, nice, good looking. However, it has its own ha hazards and breakability issues. Polyvinyl chloride or PVC, it's most economical and pretty much used in agriculture, okay, in general, okay, they use it a lot, especially because of its light intensity, however, not environmentally friendly, and it's slow to degrade. We have the vinyl sheets, it is heavier than polyethylene, it is most durable, okay, and it is UV stabilized, okay, there are many manufacturers that provide this with different layers, can be double layer, it can be triple layer, okay, depends on the thickness that you need, okay, it is more costly, okay, and it has, sadly, electrostatic properties that will attract dust, and the dust formation, especially on the inside, that means on the inside, you're going to have dew formations, if you have dew formation on the inside, that means you are susceptible to fungal diseases, etc., the polyester, which is basically, or the polycarbonate, for example, is a different solution. It is a sturdy solution. This is one of the solutions, for example, if you need uh, insulation, okay? It's an excellent, it is an excellent alternative to glass. It has a long life. It provides insulation. That means you can control the environment, okay, better. You have better chances at control between the outside and the inside, and it has less damage, okay? It can endure a lot, and there's a lot of wear and tear, and it's malleable, okay? It has a certain malleability. So the only issue with this is that it is more expensive than other systems that we can use. However, this is one of the best and that we recommend, especially for example, here at IITA, you have the glass houses, okay, that, that need a lot of work. Polycarbonate is the solution for these uh, glass houses. We have fiberglass reinforced panels. They are rigid plastics, okay. Their advantage is that they are not easy to use around and in round structures, okay. They cannot be molded easily. They are durable, retain heat better than glass does, okay? But, it, and, and it has a high resistance to breakage, okay? The panels are not very attractive because they are very close to the glass. So it is clear, it's always a clear sheet. You can see through it perfectly. However, scratching is an issue also. Acrylic semi-rigid, usually flat panels, okay? Ideal for greenhouses because of their strength, but they do scratch easily as well. Okay, so looking at these two, you can see here the polycarbonate cover. It has an inside layer, okay, it's, it, it's, an, it's just like the double glazing that you have on, on the windows, okay, however, without a layer inside, it's basically filled with air, okay. You have the, the structure needs to 
maintain. You have to add things like profiles to cling these uh, panels to the structure, okay? And you can see here, this is the polyethylene film. Okay, this has been, they, they come in different colors. Some require green, some require uh, yellow, some even require clear, okay? But it all comes with certain specifications, UV stabilization and, okay, life, okay? They will tell you this is for one season, two seasons, one year, two year, okay? Based on the specification, the thickness and the layering inside. What you see here is the wind resistance, okay? And look at these models. This is an upright tunnel. What you see here is that there's a high, the highest pressure there, okay? This is where you get the high values of pressure because there is no resistance there, okay, on the top. However, when it comes to the side, this is getting reduced. What's absorbing the pressure of the wind is the structure. And here, look at the structure, how it is molding, how it is shifting and changing. It is not getting completely absorbed inside the structure. That means the entire pressure, okay, it's not flowing within, it is grasping. That's why, for example, they have this opening there. Because of this opening, the pressure, the wind pressure and the velocity is circulating inside, protecting also the structure. It will not collapse as easily. The pressure is not retained on the side walls. It is circulated and distributed on the inside to protect and preserve the structure from the inside. The same goes for the one on top. And here, this is a dual manner, you know, if the wind comes in this direction or in that direction, whether from, from uh, east or west, okay, we are liable to get this type of protection and circulation on the inside. This is, again, this is the type of a different type of normal tunnel, okay, which is also upright. However, it has certain openings and those openings are with nets. Obviously, this is not just an opening that, that you leave there. These are nettings, okay, that are there in order to let the air circulate on the inside, okay, and protect, and, and protect the structure from the inside with respect to wind. This is, again, regardless of what the supports that we might have in the design. So for greenhouse construction, what we will look for is defining the purpose, size and, size and considerations. What is the size that I need? Okay, what is the capacity that I will require? I need to select the site. I need to understand what type of structure I need, what is the best suited for my situation, what is best suited for my, my research, what is the foundation, what kind of land preparation is needed, the structural support that is required based on wind analysis, for example, based on the load analysis, what is the covering material and the control system and technologies that I will be utilizing on the inside. So moving on from that, we talked a lot about the structure. What do we have on the inside? On the inside, I can have so many different mechanisms. I can have many different sensors, okay? There are there's things that I can utilize on the inside and things that I will need on the outside. For example, on the outside, I have to know the temperature. And you will be asked about the temperature. The relative humidity is important. What is the wind direction and speed? The rain detection, okay? This is quite important so that we know that, let's say, uh, we, we should check the gutters. What is the precipitation rate, okay? the solar radiation and light intensity. If I have any nylon cover, I need to understand to what extent my UV stabilization of my product is, okay? So from the inside, let's take the three components, or let's say first two components, the air. I need to understand what the temperature needs to be. What is my control? This is a controlled environment. If I cannot, control it and have air sensors or thermometers. Uh, this, is, this is no more a controlled environment, right? So I have to regulate the temperature, the relative humidity. The PAR light, what's PAR? Photosynthetic activity, okay? This is important 
for, for, for the research, for the plants. If the power light is low, that means the production is low. Okay, so I have to take that into consideration. Energy output by radiation and carbon dioxide levels because we have the greenhouse effect. Yeah, okay. The water for my irrigation system, the flow. I need to also understand how much water I need to drain. Electric conductivity, the EC for, for the water, the temperature, the pH, nutrient composition, evaporation, soil moisture, and especially the soil moisture content, because I don't want to use water again haphazardly. I have to be calculated and add the right amount of water. Other sensors that we can use is the plant temperature, root environment, and light intensity. Okay? All right. Let's talk about climate control. Let's simplify climate control. Simply, we need to have, for heat stress, I know Africa rice people wanted to have structures for heat stress. That means they need to insulate from the inside. There are things that you can use. Either you use different compartments. For that, a polycarbonate structure would be excellent. Okay? You can have double screen walls, either on the side or on the top, okay, or on... The, the arches, such as this, okay? This is going to insulate, creating a buffer layer in between this screen and the nylon cover, which is on top. This buffer layer is the insulation. I have a temperature inside, a temperature inside, a conserved temperature from the core. Ventilation. We have the natural aspiration and we have the blowing fans, okay, to create this type of ventilation. And we have, for example, if you remember the, uh, the uh, Chinese hat, okay, we have what we call the chimney effect. Because of the warm air, it flows directly upwards, okay, hot air, naturally, because it expands. It moves upwards while the cool air goes or settled on the inside, or it, it helps with natural circulation, okay, from the sides all the way to the top or the vent. We have what we call the desert cooling system or the pad and fan cooling systems. The pad and fan cooling systems can be situated based on, again, the design. It's either on the side or on it, well, it has to be from one side. You have from one side the cooling pads and on the other side the fans. Circulation needs to come from the outside where you have the hot air coming. The pads are carton filaments. It's just like your radiator, your car radiator. Okay? You have water percolating down. Okay? The fans pushing the air. Outside, that means it is going to push the hot air from the, the atmosphere to pass through the pad, cool down, and cool your entire structure on the inside. Yeah. What is the sorry? Lifespan. Okay. The, this material is carbon filaments. Okay, it's just like pleated paper. Okay, the lifespan, if you protect it from rodents, okay, if you protect it from, if you have saline water, the lifespan is very low. It will not last you one season. However, if you protect it by rodents, by having a wire mesh on the outside, okay, if you, for example, because what you see is the, sorry, uh, One more, that, okay. What you see on top is where water is going to pass through a canal. It is going to just percolate downwards, okay? Just by gravity. While it percolates down, downwards, the air is going to flow from outside to inside, okay? There shouldn't be much damage 
it can last for at least five years. Okay, and it's easy to replace those pads. They're not, they're not too expensive. It is easy to replace them, okay? And uh, uh, it's easy to maintain this type of structure. You only have to just take care that the water that you are using is clean water. Even if you have hard water, you might have certain sediments, but that could be cleaned, okay? You can flush sometimes with uh, uh, diluted acid and uh, it, will, it will percolate, okay? It will clean the system, no problem. Yes, yes, just wash it. It's a simple wash. It's a very simple system. We've used this a lot, by the way, in, in desert areas. Okay, it's very efficient, highly efficient on the inside. Okay, and it's not, not expensive. It's actually compared to other systems, other cooling systems, this is the least expensive uh, uh, system. Okay, so as water is going in with the, with the heat exchange, Warm air from the outside is pushed towards the inside. So what you get on the inside is cool air and it controls your, your temperature. How can I control it to a certain level? You need the sensors for that, for the fans to open and close based on the timer or based on the temperature levels that you have. One more case. Oh, okay. You have different types of heaters, okay? Especially in the zones which are let's say on, on the northern side, okay, or if you have even in desert areas where you have cold temperatures, sometimes during winter, all right, you have, let's say that those are hanging heaters, you have floor units, and you have distribution units. It either can be on the floor or on the top, okay, it depends on, again, the design and your requirement and what you need it for. If it's a nursery, you can use a floor unit, for example. If it's not a nursery, Okay, if not, you're not using benches, you need to use the soil, you need to, to have the upper unit with the distribution and circulation. And you can get extra circulation fans to make sure that the hot air is circulated around the uh, structure or inside the unit. So, knowing all of these, knowing all of that, and uh, Francis, are you, are you ready? We need one of your political uh, speeches, okay? So, uh, knowing all of this, okay, it is time for us to take action, okay? And for everything that we have been discussing throughout this workshop, it is time for us to take action. We need to change things. So help us change things. Let us know, okay, what are the challenges? What are the things that we need to manage, okay, for us to... Uh, uh, induce those challenges, okay, or sorry, to, to overcome these challenges and have a most sustainable, I will repeat this word on and on and on again. We need to have sustainable practices and to be able to sustain our equipment and our efforts. So what are your notions, ladies and gentlemen? Your comments. Well, I, I thought the speech was coming, so... Um, yeah. First and foremost... Okay. Apart from detailed learnings in school, this is the first time I am receiving detailed learning in this environment. And... It's not because you are here. It's because Francis does not tell lies. Okay. He tells it as it is. Many times we are left all alone by ourselves to figure things out. But now, having received this detailed knowledge, for me, and I can read some of the minds here, Hmm. We need to go back and take stock of what we have. Begin to look at our screen houses from the orientation of whether it is east, west, or north, south. We need to look at it. We need to look at all we are doing in the light of 
the knowledge we have received. And having, um, after doing that, there will be feedback of these are the things we think about this. Can we do things differently? Of course, we will be doing things differently because we have more knowledge than we had before. And it's going to influence our actions. We have received continuous improvement knowledge. We are receiving engineering details and it will influence our thinking. It will influence our uh, actions. There are actionable points. For me, I have or ne, despite all the challenges, I have 14 actionable points on a daily basis. I look at it from the eye of where I'm coming from. What should I be doing differently? What should I go and do without much money or little money? I have been making notes at the back of the list. Sh share them, please. Number one, plot, sign, plot numbering, very critical. Number two, speed signs. Number two is what? Sorry? Speed signs. Speed signs? Yes, within campus. Okay. Signage. Continuous communication with scientists. Equipment care. Proper record and operations uh, uh, of operations and breathing. Land rotation, very critical. Uh, Soil analysis, chemical disposal bottles and on air, knapsack usage, insecticidal uh, knapsack different from herbicide, not having to wash and then use one, mm -hmm. uh, health, safety, and environment. Field designs and maps with topography machine information system, and then convert what can be converted as old things to do new things. Those are some of the things I noted with the hope of going to implement. And now today I'm adding to it. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. I want to talk on just what you just discussed, which is the screen houses. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in, in uh, choosing a location uh, for a screen house and to amend already challenges that one could experience during the usage. I don't know whether you measure, maybe it's when I step out, or uh, which, I mean, the direction you will need to, to take. I don't know if. Yeah. It's, it's a, Yes, one more. This. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, north south arrangement. North south arrangement. Okay, avoid uh, the shadow. Okay. Okay. So the, the, there are, again, the, the orientation is, mm. is quite important, and we need to have and understand the when we are picking a location, we don't have a shading effect from the nearby surroundings. So I just can't place a nut house in any haphazard form or in any haphazard location, especially if light is of the essence for me. So your question. So, yeah. Uh, but in choosing the, whichever way, whether it's north, south, or east, west, I think one should consider the the variables which you need to actually control in the screenhouse is temperature, the the, the 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 water, the humidity, the sunlight. 
So if maybe it's a crop that is uh, that it will require high temperatures. So should you follow it the way you said that it should be maybe north to south direction? Or if the crop is not the one that requires high temperatures to actually do well. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. Well, if let, you... let me put it this way. Okay, you're trying, it, it, again, this is a controlled environment, okay? If this is a net house, then what you're saying, we have a problem. We cannot control it because it's based on the outside temperature. There is a reduced effect or an induced effect based on the type of material that we're using. However, if it is a cover, nylon, polycarbonate, polyethylene, polyvinyl, okay, this is going to be controlled and we have to use control measures like a cooling system, in cold times, a heating system, etc. So we have to maintain, since this is a controlled environment, this is up to us to regulate. And for us to regulate, we have to monitor. And that's the, it, it doesn't matter here, the issue of whether it is north and south or east and west. North and south here will affect the sunlight. And the sunlight is quite important. Because if I have, again, if the, 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 the sunlight goes from east to west, okay, and it, it, it affects my crop due to shading effect, okay, then I have a problem with my, with my procession. That means my research is jeopardized because of light intensity. However, in different conditions where we need to control the environment, I simply can just cover it all inside. I will control the heat. Because if, again, since this is something that I'm relying on, this parameter, I have to take it into my account. I have to take the, the control of it. I cannot let, let the, the, the environment control what I need for my experimentation. I don't know if this is what you're saying. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Um, what, what is the average uh, height that is ideal? The average height that is ideal? There is no rule of thumb. It is the question of what crop you need inside, basically. Two, it depends, again, on your temperature. I cannot give you the, the, temp, the, the ideal height for a location here in Nigeria is not the same that I have in Lebanon. It is not the same that I have in, in the deserts of uh, uh, Iraq. It is not the same that I have in North America, okay, where it is mostly cold. So the, the requirements based on the type of structure, based on the design, okay, if it is a single tunnel, if it is a, a uh, uh, let's say what we call a bi-tunnel or if it is a multi-span, multi-spans can go up to six meters. Okay? Uh, a single tunnel can go up to three meters, up to four meters maximum by design. And that's the single tunnel. But you, it, it also depends on how high you, know, you want it, an upright single tunnel. Okay? That means you have two meter high, okay, upright uh, uh, structures, okay, before you have the arches. And then you would go, either it's a low arch or it is a dome-like structure. Depends also on the width. The width, the sizing inside for the wind. That's why it is always important for us to provide the, you know, the dimensions. So in, in the plan, in the planning, if, if we can go, uh, one, uh, two, two more actually. One more, one more, more. I don't know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, no, the, the, what I need for the design, let's go for, 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 for it. It's just the steps of selection. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay, so I have to define my purpose. And then the sizing. What size do I need? If I need a single tunnel, sun, a single tunnel, well, Different manufacturers will give you different decisions, even the for low tunnels, okay? They will give you different dimensions. I had, uh, uh, I, I had once four meter uh, greenhouse, which is a single tunnel. And I had a nine meter wide single tunnel. 
okay it differs the volume inside differs and the level of course if i have a four meter design there is a certain restriction by engineering that i cannot go beyond in terms of height otherwise it is going to tip over due to just simply due to wind okay so I, well, if if you are to construct a a, a screen house for a, one hectare of land okay uh, what will you advise for the the spacing for the spacing yes this so that it will have to right make a, what type of soil is there uh, what is the soil profile uh, 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 what the what is the wind direction okay what is the intensity of wind okay i'm going to ask even more parameters that you can give me which i know that right now at this point you don't have the answers to i don't know i don't know the exact dimensions i cannot give you the exact dimensions you know who can the manufacturers you know why it's their job the point is i need to understand what they are going to sell to me i need to understand what they are going to provide me what kind of system and i have to agree if this is suitable for me or not one thing is that i am not a construction engineer i am an agricultural engineer and i'm an, a mechanist okay these types of structures have a certain civil design in the civil design, okay, if I do something wrong, it might collapse. For it to, to withstand the, the pressures of time and nature, etc., there have to be certain parameters that they will have to provide. However, what I'm telling you is that careful what material they provide you as well. Because from an operational perspective, if they give you galvanized steel rods, for example, if it is not cold, welded, don't buy it. If it is not, okay, constructed in a manner that if it is only bolted together, don't buy it. Okay, there are certain ways, certain tools, certain parameters for construct constructing greenhouses, okay, where you can have certain malleabilities or resistance to certain pressures like wind and uh, uh, rain and other, and other influences, okay? Hey, I mean, um, so one of the biggest challenge we face in Nigeria is gas during the Amazon. Uh, is there a tool or technology that we can use uh, to determine how frequently, how frequently we should be cleaning the glass so that the, um, the integrity of, uh, or rather, so that we maximize the radiation or the heat that's coming through? Determining the frequency of cleaning? Yeah, you know, yeah, because like this time of the year, dust is really heavy. Okay. Uh, what else? But in, in the, uh, you do it at least once a week in this high season where you have, for example, at Harmatan. Okay, especially if you have uh, uh, the, the material that has uh, uh, static okay, it provides static electricity. That means it, it is going to attract the dust and the mud. You have to at least clean or wash or flush once, once a week, okay? And this is part of, you know, the, the, the operator's, you know, job otherwise. But again, if it's a screen house, it's challenging because in screen houses, okay, that means you're, you're, uh, you're uh, uh, providing water or you are actually uh over watering okay your plants or creating some contamination on your plants so that is a problem well you you cannot uh, basically you can measure eventually if you have soil soil probes how much you are watering but the, the problem is if you have some of this dust when when it's diluted it might uh, burn your your uh, crops Okay, it might have an effect on the leaves. You, you would have to then clean your crop from within. Otherwise, all the dust that is that has been cleared from the nets is going to fall on your crop. On the glass panels, just have a sprinkler system. Okay, just uh, on automated the no nozzles, flush it. It goes and it drains through the gutters and that's it. And you can go on your merry way. You don't have to have somebody to move all the way up and, and clean it or wipe it out. 
you can have just have a, a flushing system. It's the same with solar panels, for example. They have this boom with sprinklers and that's it. Unless you have pressurized water and somebody can enjoy uh, cleaning. Right. It has to be protected in such an environment, right? Can, yes. I, can I make a comment? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, please, uh, do you pay chance lecture university students or like undergraduates? Because I'm not, I'm not an engineer, okay? But the lecture you gave has even given me more interest in engineering, such like that I would have even diverted from breeding to engineering. It's never too late. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's late now. <laughs> but, but anyway, I enjoyed your lecture. I, what what I've, I've come to notice from what you gave gives me a clear understanding that in a, I'm talking from the perspective of a crop research in the commerce. Most of the screen houses that we, I see there are lacking the basic stuff you are talking about. I'll just give one example. There's a screen house closer to our rice barn where a lady was doing her research work in tomatoes. The temperature in the screen house could rise as much as 39 degrees. And at the end of the day, you know, flower washing and tomatoes. She lost everything. And yeah. she was complaining that maybe there's a problem with the soil. No, no, it, it was heat. So, so our biggest problem is, is how to control temperature in the screen houses. That is what I have noticed personally. You want you want to give you you wanted to give you the, uh, the straight and blunt answer. Yes. You're talking about the RGA facility there. The RGA? Yeah. No. It's oh not, no! It's not it the was, RGA or, or the screen the house. The screen house beside the okay. RGA. It, it's good that you mentioned that the screen house there. You have it has I believe a wooden structure, right? Yes. Right. Okay. So careful for that. This is one. Okay, because on the long run, it might have a certain effect, by the way, even okay. though the, the wood absorbs heat, okay, but careful that it does not have a lot of damage. Plus, if it is treated heat, again, careful for the crops. This is one. Two, the screen is there. I couldn't see the inside from the screen. Yes. I could not see the inside from the screen, which means your screen needs to be washed or cleaned after your, your season, okay? So it is having not only a greenhouse effect inside, okay? It is providing some sort of insulation or trapping the temperature on the inside because I didn't also see a, a, a ventilation fan. No. You had, you know, just open, I guess you just opened the door, but that, yes. again, that is also another problem, okay? So the controls that you have there, it was an improvised structure. Okay, that you are using, but you need to accommodate that. Try to shift that. Okay, to help you control your environment. Add to that a fan. Okay, a small fan that can control uh, lot, uh, the heat. So if it overheats on the inside, use that fan and control. Go and check the thermometer every now and then. You have thermometers specialized for greenhouses that will give you the high and the low temperatures, especially if you have variations during day and night. So you go over the next day and you check, oh, oh, yesterday the high was 40 degrees, the low was 20. A 20 degree deviation can cause a problem for your crop. Okay. We had a lot of, I, I know this in vegetables at least, okay? The flowering was affected, okay? And the, flower, the flowers fell from, for example, from uh, um, uh, eggplants, okay? Just simply due to that deviation in temperature between day and night. Okay. 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 So it desiccated the flowers. Zero production. This is a problem. This is an effect. That's why this is called a controlled environment. So control it. You know what the problem is? No. Okay. This is going to be funny. We know what the problem is. We know that you know what the problem is. We know that you know that we know what the problem is, <laughs> but nobody's doing anything about it. Again, this is time for action. You're yeah, right. Don't say, yeah, it's okay. Well, this is the case. So yeah, this is the parameter that we had. And you put it eventually as a researcher, you, you have to report this in your publication, right? 
yeah, well, we probably maybe have some sort of error because the situation inside, you know, your controlled environment was X, Y, Z. But you do not mention that you control this environment and you did not mention that you should have done something about it. So do something about it. Look at, monitor the temperature on the inside and go check it. And if you have this overheating effect, the increased levels of relative humidity, use a fan, add one, buy one. It is not too expensive, okay? And it doesn't require high levels of electricity. My issue, for example, with the RGA, and we're designing, we, we, we should start with a new RGA in, in yeah. Kumasi, right? Yeah. For rice. My issue was that it does not, does not even have netting. It has a wire mesh. Yes. Right? Yes. The wire mesh, okay, this is not even thrips resistant. This does not even protect against any control of pests in the environment. It yes. does not provide a greenhouse effect. Yeah, yeah, right. Remove the wire. Nothing, nothing is going to change. The only thing will change is that, yeah, people cannot go from, from the door, you know, from, uh, uh, from inside. They can come from the side, you know. The other thing is that the system of irrigation, we need, did not discuss this because systems of irrigation are complex things. And we need to work this. We are all challenged with this. We need experts that would help us, okay? But we need to understand, okay, that what experts are trying to portray to us or what they pitch for us can work actually for us. We need okay. to be agreeable, okay? We are all either scientists or I started in research. I began my, my work, I started in research, okay? And in research, I have to question things. Is this suitable for me or not? Would that fit my purpose or not? Can I control it or not? Because if I cannot control it, I will never be able to control the result or get reliability. I think the only thing the wire mesh is doing is to prevent bears from entering the screen house, that's all. So, was, so would, would right. that account for an RGA? <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. Just a comment to what Kepa said. In fact, uh, from my experience with screen house, because I wanted to put out a screen house and I discussed with a colleague scientist and he sort of discouraged me. He says, what are you going to do different? Look at the number of screen house that we have over here. All of them are not working. And I look through, we have a number of screen house over there. They are not working. Basically one, if you put it there, a maximum of six months or one year, wind breakage. Two, overheating. Three, water supply in there is no good. So these are the three common things that I observe with the screen house that we have at the station. So after listening to your presentation, I sort of became angry. I said, then who, who is he responsible for these structures? Because yeah. I think that there should be some uh, te technique going in inside. It shouldn't just be a structure. And we have a number of them, they are not working. And I'm a scientist, I don't have all this. Uh, I'm just a breeder. I don't have this uh, technical knowledge. So maybe we just request a screen out. Who, whose responsibility is it? I mean, to make sure that it meets the conditions in, in our standard. If not, we just request they put up something just for us as the screen house, and right. it doesn't work. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying not to make you happy, not make you angry. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so the thing, the thing is, that, that where, where you should be happy is that now you know, okay, that this is wrong and there is something that you can do about it you want to share you know but the, but the thing is unless you go and unless you follow up because this is your research okay and again this goes back to what we have discussed in in regards of operations the communication and the collaboration between the researchers and the operational the operations, team yes. okay if you do not follow up. You, this is your plot. This is your research. Okay. This is eventually your responsibility. The operations are there to help you 
achieve your goals. Okay? Their goal is to help you achieve your goals. So they should be able to help you. Hello, sir. And that leads ah, me to another politician. thing, sir. Yes. Ah, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that leads me to another thing. Okay. Uh, with due respect to our scientists, right? I think we need a change in mindset. Absolutely. Because they are always secretive about what they are doing. I don't know for what reason. Secretive? Yes. About their experiments. Now we should give them the right to answer on this. Sir. Okay, just oh, continue, okay, continue. Okay. Yeah. Now, in concluding on this, on this very issue, this paradigm shift that is on the ground now will bring forth transparency. You need help. The scientist will have to discuss into details with operations. Now, I know that if I have any issue with uh, anything, I have people I can call upon. Please, this is my problem in operations. I'm thinking of this. What is the cheapest and the best way to do it? I will call on you. I will call on everybody we have interacted with. Huh? So the scientists also need to open up and then help us to interact and then we can be part of the solutions to their problems. I agree. Uh, we, we, please. Please, please, Teresa, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have quite a number of questions here, but you have mentioned some of those things that are actually lacking. I want to believe that here in Ibadan, we have some good screen houses. Not all of them are totally bad. We have some new structures that are actually good. But what he mentioned about being secretive about what you want to do. Sometimes it is not the scientist that will go to Mr. Wilson's office to say, please give me a screen house. Oftentimes, I'm the one that will do that or some other colleagues. When I get there and say, I need a screen house that can plant in 3,000 seedlings, he will tell me that he doesn't have. And obviously, he doesn't have that size. So whatever he gives me is what I have to make use of. Right. Now, I would like to know, we are centralizing. Would the screen house be also uh, at the central? Uh, it should be. Okay. It should be. So the kind of structure I need for yam, for example, right. I want to do that to be totally different from what they need for soybean. Right. In terms of heights and some other stuff, because yam can go up to 2.5 meter high. So how are we going to manage this? Then in terms of size, for the past three years now, uh, we have been planting over 23,000 seedlings every year, covering 0.7 meter hectare of land. Of course, we don't have all this planted in this corner. So we just put a particular population of importance and we put them in the available space in the screen house and put the rest on the field. The challenge we have with this is uh, the survivor is poor on the field. So we lose a lot. It could right. be as much as 75% loss for this last year. Okay. So is it possible for Yam, therefore, to come and say, okay, I need a screen house on one hectare of land and annually we'll be using it from April to February every year. So two months is just a resting period and it will be available just for our crop. Wilson might be the best person to answer this. But, but uh, one thing I wanted to say is that all crops will be treated uh, equally, right? So, and uh, it will be based on what's available. We can't stretch ourselves. Of course, if you need, if you say you need one hectare and we don't have that, then we, we're not going to give it to you. Uh, and of course, you have to bear in mind it's going to cost you as well. So it's not going to be free. But I think we, we will treat all the crops equally and it will be under um, operations. So everything will be integrated to be centralized. Wilson? Yeah, I asked that question all that time that if we want to construct a screen house in one hectare of land. Mm -hmm. I know where I was going, but nevertheless, 
Uh, she's asking for one hectare. I think we can try to I guess, I mean, yeah, to have a. So a you were asking uh, for the AM program? Uh, 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 we're trying to make you happy. So we've been asking for one hectare for the AM program. So, <laughs> so yeah. we, we can construct if she's ready to, uh, to pull the bill. We, we can. And so, but not, that's why I asked you that question. It and I, I'm able to get a. Somebody has to come, take some data, design okay. based on your need. Okay. So who's going to decide upon this? What is, where is the need going, going to come from? From both of you. Okay. You will have to provide the field data. Okay. And available. You have to provide the crop data that's available for these manufacturers of greenhouses to come and construct something that is suitable for your purpose. And they will have to provide it as such. This has to be agreed by both parties. This cannot go one way. Okay, this cannot be, yeah, well, we constructed for multi-purpose, etc. This is only strictly for cassava research. Okay, it has to be allocated in agreement with the operations. Okay, and then we can move forward. But without this agreement, we cannot, we cannot do anything about it. Gustavo, you wanted to comment? Sorry. Gustavo. Yeah, I can I, I can comment, but uh, it, it, I, I heard that uh, Alec is talking. It's but it's ready. Can I comment? Yes, no? yes, yes, Gustavo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, to to uh, good good discussion, really good discussion. I think uh, in addition to what you said and what you all of uh, you comment. One important aspect that uh, we need to consider is the maintenance or cleaning. Again, the same as for the seed processing, 5S, keep that organized. It's, uh, we, and I, I went to, to, to IITA and I, I visited really good greenhouses, really well maintained, and some greenhouses that were not that well maintained. And, and I mean, and why that difference? Uh, it, not only in IITA, but also in Africa Rice, and 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 and, be, and of course because uh, and the reason uh, we know the reason is because there are different breeding programs that manages the different uh, greenhouses. But one uh, and goes to decentralization. I used to work in a research station where we have uh, four different breeding programs, and we had uh, I think something around twenty greenhouses for this for for breeding programs and we have also crop protection but anyway four or five uh, groups for 20 greenhouses and they were spread decentralized managed by different crops there were different teams so different results and then once we decide no let's just, let's or organize that we established a team and this team is responsible for for the greenhouse the, to maintain the greenhouse, to or so at the end would be the centralization, and the result was much much better. At the end, nobody would wanted to return to the way it used to be because uh, with specialization people will start start learning this type of things that that you presented today, uh, uh, Amir. They started developing their capacity the, the, to. Uh, to understand these things. So I think that the goes to what um, what Alex said, that it needs, needs to be centralized to needs need to be properly managed. But yeah, again, uh, good job. Uh, let's uh, keep working. Thanks, Thank Gustavo. Yeah, Alex. And, and the other thing is that it goes back to what we observed yesterday when we visited the seed cleaning uh, plant, uh, where they were saying that they're using glass houses for drying. So we do have uh, we do have the capacity, but I think uh, in some cases we are using the facilities. We are not using them for the right purpose. So it's just a question of reallocating the resources so that we're using them in the right way as well. Um, like I said, the the, the 
the question of uh, constructing more screen houses is, is sort of touch. It's not as easy as just asking Wilson and then we construct a screen house. It has to be approved by uh, management. Actually, the DG has to endorse that. We just constructed one for, um, for virology and we had to get permission from, from, uh, from the DG. And already I've had some complaints that uh, we're putting it on prime land. It shouldn't be there. So, so there are all those issues. Like uh, We just have to keep in mind that uh, land mass is limited. Yeah, we are not going to open up all the fields for, for screen houses. Let, yeah, let me mention one thing here. Something that we, we've witnessed in different uh, centers, be it NARS or even on, on CG centers, is that old structures are somehow becoming warehouses. Okay, so if you have a screen house there, the structure is still standing, it is converted to, uh, to storage. And I might, and I have to say, this is totally this organized storage. Had it been organized, maybe we, we, we won't comment, but it is completely disorganized. If you have any scrap, yeah, let's put it there. It's an old structure anyway. So if it collapses, if it has rodents, if it has any hazards, that's no problem, but no. You can work on, you can improve that structure. This is where the repairs and maintenance, okay, can, can do wonders. Even in all structures like that, we can support it to fit our purpose. So if we have a lot of allocated space, we don't have to create new ones. Okay, and that's the point. We do not have to create every single time new ones. Sometimes the old structures can there need some maintenance. We can upgrade, we can do something about it and fit it for our purpose. Yes, please, someone. Yes, just a comment about scientists or breeders being secret. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's not, maybe the problem is with the communication. Because right. I'm a breeder, I'm interested in my genetics in breeding when I sleep, when I think I see chromosomes. <laughs> so if I see Ahmed and maybe I talk to him, Ahmed, I want a structure to screen for heat tolerance. And knowing the knowledge I may have, assuming that I tell him I need a screen house for screen tolerance, he should be able to provide. provide. So unless Ame comes to probe further, I'm okay. I'm expecting he should be able to get the details. That's why I said after taking these lectures, I became to get angry because we just, they provide a structure six months is broken down and you ask who's for. So it's, maybe it's the communication. Scientists respect disciplines. So when I think you are providing me something, I assume based on your expertise, you should be able to do it perfect. But if not, you have to prove further. So it's, I think the problem is with the communication, not that uh, they are just being secret. Yeah, it, it is always, always the case. I mean, communication should be two-directional, always not in, in one direction. Okay, just uh, from Peter and then you, Lenin, okay? All right. Yes, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, um, two things I really want to talk about. Number one, the, for IIT here, I do not think we should have challenges with uh, screen houses, but I think it's because they are put to wrong use. These things were not here before until when we had a DG who was not careful about things. And then at a point, some of those glasses were used to dry personal things like uh, Moringa, which are not part of the experiment. And you see them, they just put it there and then uh, you can't find still how to use. That's how those things came up. And because you also find, if you notice, know, you find that some of them were not, are not even maintained now, not because they could have been maintained, but because of the fact that it was like a case of what is being used for now is not what it was meant to be used for. So, with this, I think we should be able to um, overcome the challenges. Number two, okay, Teresa is not here. I do not expect that I want to plant 0 0.7 hectares of land with any crop, and then I want to build screen houses in a whole 0 0.7 hectares. It should be. To me, a, a screen house or a glass house is a controlled environment. You could control it to see what you want to, what you want to do. A rep can be in one screen house, another in another screen house, another in another screen house. You have, you have met your purpose. Then the other thing, as it stands today within IETA, 
they are centrally controlled. It's not like what it used to be in those days. I know that uh, most of them were constructed by different units for different crops. But when it was put together, nobody, no, um, no crop, no scientist owes any screen house as it stands today. It's a question of you want, you go to the central pool and say, give me a screen house. This is what it is. And this is how I want to do that. They will allocate to you what's available. But it also looks to me as if some people take them when they don't really need them because they know, well, every month I pay. So I want to hold on to it. When other you want to use it, I will say, I'm still using it. We are having those challenges. So those who really want to put it to use at that point in time, don't have it to use. Others are still keeping it. Maybe because the charges are not high. I think it's about $50 or something. I don't remember how much. Uh -huh. Because it's not too high. So we can keep it until when I need it. In the next six months, they may not be doing anything there. But they just pay that fee so that they can have it at all the time. Mm -hmm. I think that is, these are the issues we need to look at. If we have a good moderation, it's a case of saying, your experiment is finished. I see that nothing is going on there. Relinquish it. Somebody else needs to use it. If you have put, put that one in there, make it to work well. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Uh, uh, so, so Peter is one of the culprit yeah. <laughs> about the, the usage. Right. Yes. He, well, he's he, confessing. So. Yes. <laughs> he, he's telling us that uh, some of the screen houses, and he has a screen house. I think uh, CSH uh, is it for for for, uh, for, so for so. but the the area you are using is so small compared to the 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 uh, I... so <laughs> I'm always checking so I I have to I have to make a ruling on this but first first let, let me hear uh, Lenin, so yes. the truth is that sir the truth is that the the fear is there that maybe. In two months, I will get to use the screen house, right. and I might not get. So that's why most of them they don't want to. They are ready to pay, and we are charging them. And so, because if at that time you want to now use it, you don't get the screen house. Where do you go? That is why they are keeping to the screen houses. Understand? Yeah, Lenin, please. Uh, I think I just want to comment on the issue of uh, the confidentiality and secrecy. That's. <laughs> That surrounds the breeders. Uh, myself, I'm a breeder by profession. For 15 years, I was breeding. Yeah, I think basically when a breeder is given a program, uh, there's nothing as uh, rewarding as getting varieties or uh, anything that is released commercially. So the team that you work with is more or less like your family. Any weakling within that family, it means there are no products. So I don't think it's a matter of uh, trying to keep information, just like what you said. It's a matter of communication breakdown. Where probably within the team, there's not too much in terms of communication or people are just assuming that probably my boss knows that I need to be given this information and you didn't even ask about it. So there's a lot going behind the scene. Yourself, you have your work to do. I have my work to do. So if you don't come to me to ask, I may as well assume that things are moving on well, yet you are suffering in. But as a family, just like I defined initially, it's a matter of communicating. Even as a father in your house, you need to communicate with everything. Don't assume everyone down there is enjoying what is happening up there. Yeah. It's a, I feel like okay. you need to oh, join sorry. hands and spread the love, you know? Yeah. Sorry, can I, can, I, can I make a quick comment on yes, that? Please, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are scientists in Abuja, yeah? And when they come around, I ask them for the details of what they do, because um, signage in research farm is very, very critical, because we have guests around. Now, you might be working on um, weed trial, and there are weed on, on, on some particular part of the plot. So if there's a signage that says that this particular plot is a weed trial, then everybody knows, that, okay, there's a weed trial going on here. So the guy told me, no, this is top secret. I don't want anybody to come here and copy my work and modify it. I'm like, oh, really? They're like, yeah, I don't want that. So because of that, I won't be giving you the details of my plot. You know, when the scientist comes and tells you this, ask him, how will you ever publish? So, 
Okay, nothing, nothing is, is secretive. Okay, this is not NASA technology. Okay, so I was wondering is, why, you know, so yeah. to me, I feel there are some little bit of secrets still that they don't want us to know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We are accessing Gemplasm from CIMIT IITA, and it's a three way hybrid that is sitting there. There's no way you can put the, the pedigree there. That one, it has to be kept as a secret, obviously. Yeah, but things like operational things to say we want to cross, we want to self-pollinate, full sip, half sip. No, that's not a secret. Your, your mic is not... It will tell you the trial name and every other information. And if I... If I may, no, even on young field, you'll find that as well. So, so if there is more information that you will need to know, maybe you should let us know here so that uh, nothing will be secretive again to you. <laughs> I can also stand in for me. So I think my point is, uh, you know, when this stuff comes around, you want to explain things. You have to explain what is going on on your plots to them. So now, when they come around sometimes, they ask you what's going on on this plot. You, look, you just look like a dummy. You'll be like, okay, my involvement stops at land preparation. Then it makes you look as if you're not even in charge of what you said you're in charge of. So, but if they come and you have an insight of what they are doing and can even give them a brief introduction. Let's, no, I'm not saying, I'm not talking no, about no, YAM. No. I'm saying okay. some scientists. Can I'm I, not saying YAM or cassava. I, I want to say something yeah. here, but I want to hear Francis. But before, I want to answer everybody regarding this. Go ahead. We are not asking for the codes of uh, top crosses. We don't need it. Yeah. We are not, it is always coded. I okay. have been part of it. I'm still part of it now. Right. So that's not what we are asking for. We are just asking for the general idea, what that will, the information that will help us to serve you better. Okay. From, from an operational perspective, exactly. my life is already complicated as it is. Okay, I do not want to complicate my life with things I don't want to know. Okay, from a breeder's perspective, okay, I don't care. Uh, okay, they should not share the crosses. We don't care about the crosses. But, 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 wait, hold on. One thing that we should preserve, okay, is the plotmanship. Do not forget that. The labeling, do not forget that. Okay, when I, I go to the field as an operator, Okay, and when the researcher goes to the field as a researcher, they need to identify each variety on the field. We need to identify that these are different, okay, because once the data needs to be collected, okay, we need to be able to manage the crop based on their recommendation, based on the breeder's recommendation, we have to comply with their needs. This is our job in terms of operations. We have to provide based on what they need. Again, the communication should go back and forth. But if I do not ask, as an operational, from an operational perspective, if I do not ask the breeders if they need anything to be done on their plots before I do it, then I am meddling with their business. Okay? Again, this is not agricultural production. Okay? We can't go on and doing everything. Yeah, we'll see you all. Okay, oh, this, there's a, there are some weeds. Let's go and weed. No, I have to ask permission. Okay, if I don't, I might be jeopardizing their, their research because maybe the timing is wrong. Maybe the thing that I will be doing is wrong. Maybe they want to do it in another way. They have their control on their experiment and their trials, not I. I'm not the person as from an operational perspective who has to handle this. However, from a breeder's perspective, they need to share their needs. They need to share what needs to be done from A to Z. That this is why planning is important, even in the greenhouses, okay? From A to Z, and here I have mentioned management and challenges, okay? And with respect to management, we need to communicate together. One, to allocate the needs, provide what is needed by the breeders, control the environment based on the crop need and the trial needs, okay? And I have to provide for, for their setup. This has to be in agreement. If there is no agreement involved, 
the entire thing is worthless. The entire thing is worthless. From the technical aspects of the structures, etc. fine. Now we understand a little bit more on the, the, the setups that we need, the different uh, opportunities that we have, the different structures that we can have. But from the operational perspective, hey, there's a lot that we can do. And we are all here to change. As I said, this is time for us to change. We need to change things. And if we together are starting, you know, we're, we're, in a way, we're starting to point fingers. Let's not do that. Let's agree. Okay. We all agree that we have to communicate together. Let's agree on the level of communication. Let's be more constructive. Okay. Let's, let's make, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple, a simple thing to sit, sit down, just pre-plan, have a chart. From an operational perspective, I need to have a chart. What do I need to do? What do you want? What is your purpose from this uh, greenhouse or glass house or nut house? Okay, tell me what operations you need across your season. And we have to set a schedule for that. This is why we, we had the scheduling yesterday. We talked about it. Okay, this is why we have the crop calendars that we talked about. If I don't have the crop calendar, I understand what needs to be done based on the time, the time frame. I'm doing nothing. And basically, I'm just firefighting. I don't want to firefight. I have to know what I need to do. I have to come and talk to my team every single week. Okay, today we have to do A, B, C, and D. Okay, we, I have to manage this. But for me to be able to tell them that A, B, and C, and D need to be done on this day, on this date, this is my, my, these are my KPIs. This is what makes my job right. And this is the quality parameters that I need. Okay, then comes the breather as well and, and checks. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't see why they should be, um, uh, scientists would have to be secretive because the information that they've been writing in terms of the uh, IIT environment belongs to IIT, it doesn't belong to them. But then it also goes back to what I said the other day, when we are developing protocols, uh, right from inception, I think the technician should be involved, the farm manager should be involved, because uh, they need to have an input so that they provide the, uh, the, the right environment for, for the trials. I think they, they should be involved right from the get-go. And there should be no need for, for the information to be, uh, to be held by the, by the scientists alone. It should be shared. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely true. Like Francis, you mentioned one important thing is a paradigm shift. Okay, This paradigm shift is what we have been trying to accomplish throughout this entire workshop. Okay, This is what we have been discussing. We have been trying to induce the culture, not only of improvement, but of centralization of everything. And for us to be able to centralize, that means there has to be an open collaboration and communication between the breeders from one side and the operations from the other side. Where we have multiple breeding programs, this has to be allocated by, by the management, by the centralized management. There has to be a committee involved. We cannot just take things or take matters into our own hands, okay? I mean, the best example, and we discussed it yesterday, that the land allocation, for example, here at, at, at Kumasi, remember, okay, it, uh, each breeding program has, has its own jurisdiction. These are my lands. And that's it. No crop rotation, no management, none whatsoever. If another breeding program needs to have a, 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 an allocated piece of land, they communicate from one breeding program to another. There's nothing centralized. So here it's quite important for us to have management. You have management, for example, at IITA. And there, we need to work together. If they need to support you, you need to support them at the same time. It's a two-way streak. Okay? Everything is a two-way streak. I think we talked too much. Yeah, you want to? Okay. Early last year, Dr. Rashad has a presentation that... Uh, you know, talks about the genetic gain, the correlation between genetic gain and the size of the population. And uh, it makes us to realize that 
the more you have, the better for your genetic gain and selection uh, process. And you said here in the garden that it may be difficult to have more spin out, but sincerely, yam needs more space for the initial stage of our selection at the seedling level. I don't know how that can be accomplished if you're actually looking at uh, doing things better. If it's not possible in Ibadan, can it be possible in Ikene so that we know that, okay, once we generate our seats here, we are getting our seedlings in, in Ikene, where we have more uniform space and environment for the initial selection. Thank you. Oh, do I answer? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah, we, we actually, uh, uh, Teresa, that's, that's a good question. We, we are in the process of looking for more space, like for more land, so that we expand, like, uh, like I said, we are really constrained in terms of space in Ibadan right now. And uh, that's what has also been contributing to the degradation of the, the soils. So we have to give some relief to, to, the, uh, to the fields in Ibadan. We are looking outside. I don't know if uh, Ikene can take on so much. I've been talking to Wilson uh, and, and we were thinking of maybe asking for more land from, the, from our, our hosts in, in Ikene to, to the extent that that's possible, we're going to do that. But it's also a question of maybe start to, uh, like uh, Gabriel has taken the initiative of um, negotiating some um, some deal with uh, the government. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, we were given about um, 50 hectares that we can use. So, yeah, we are looking for more space. Um, all I'm saying is that in Ibadan, we are constrained. It's, we, we, and we have to be aware of that. So. Back to you, Teresa. Are you aware that Yam has a ban in on it? <laughs> Are you aware that Yam has a ban in on it? What happened to Yam coming back to on why wouldn't you? What happened to the baseline uh, data and the survey that ought to come out of high rainforest station? Something to think about and to pick up with your program. Thank you. Okay. Um, and the question you're asking, Oga Francis, a question that are beyond her. She is not within her capacity to decide that. But let me quickly say this. While you were out, I made mention of something. You want to plant a seed nursery in one hectare of land, and you want to have a um, screen house on one hectare of land. A screen house is supposed to be a controlled environment, am I right? What I think you need to think of is to think of something like, I want to plant a screen, uh, I want to plant a young screen house, maybe it's about three hectares if you, if you want to, and now you don't have a screen house of three hectares. Think of if I'm going to replicate, I can get the screen house here, replicate it, control the environment, rep one, rep two, rep three, rep four, if you want to, want to do, that can be possible. But if you are looking at only, you want to re remain in a straight jacket, that may not be possible. I know that breeding is a game of numbers. <clears throat> but all the other thing also, maybe it's not here we should discuss this. When you do, when you plant seedlings, they're all called natural selections. Those that are able to withstand the environment, they can go to the next stage. Those that will not be able, they drop. However, I'm not to control what you should do, but I think what you should need to do is to think about what we have available at this point in time. Try to also decentralize your issue that I want to have it only in one location so that we can move forward. If you go to think of that, that you want to have a screen house that will take one hectare, 0 0.5 hectares at a time, you may wait forever. Thank you. Okay, well. <laughs> it's, um, there are different, again, there are different points of views, okay? This, again, is something that should remain as a management committee, okay, for things to be decided. Okay, let's not go on, you know, just... There are different requirements and different, that's understandable for different breeders, okay, different space requirements, but 
Again, we have to consider these parameters in a committee for us to be able to allocate what is available, okay, and to analyze this. 